They really exist. Oh my goodness, it is it is uh, Moo Mammo, and what a Moo Mammo it is. Uh, I am actually calling in as a disembodied Troy from the beautiful, well, from the city <laughs> of Reno, Nevada. <laughs> and uh, it's been an adventure. So you may hear in the background the sounds of jackpots and uh, very, um, I would say, unenthused gamblers surrounding me as they all um, as i'm performing the mutants and masterminds monday big news announcement live for them taciturn even yeah yeah taciturn that's it very taciturn they're serious business here and uh they'd frown upon someone sitting at an actual um slot machine but not putting any money into it i don't know why what that's about but uh listen if i get cut off Really, who am I in the scheme of things when you've got these two gentlemen and the biggest news that ever was newsed on this day? Um, I'm going to mute myself and turn it over to you, Alex. I'm going to turn off this infernal future pop and let's get right into it. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Well, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for a very special Mumamo this week, where we are finally unveiling, um, after our unveiling on Saturday, that we are doing an official licensed product for Valiant Comics. Um, we're really excited to be working with them. We have a couple of big books coming out um, set in the Valiant universe that's really going to make it possible to bring this new setting into your games at home. So Steve and I have been working on it for a while, and I... We're here to talk about it. We're here to a answer questions, mm -hmm. make descriptions, whatever we need to do. Yeah. We've been, this has been uh, a real challenge, especially for Alex, because uh, this project has been in works for quite some time. Uh, and now we finally have been able to announce it after a couple of delays, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, Look, I'm the person who will buy your Christmas present in June and want to give it to you the next day. <laughs> It's hard for me, y'all. Right. This this NDA part of the job is not my favorite part of the job. Yeah, I hear that. Um, but yeah, we're doing a whole bunch of fun stuff. We've got a Valiant Adventures Heroes Handbook that's going to be coming out with a new uh, quick start character guide with a bunch of Valiant archetypes in it. We're going to be doing some new optional rules uh, to better reflect the sort of gritty, visceral realism of the Valiant universe and how it relies a little bit more on technology than on other origins for powers as opposed mm -hmm. to our traditional mutants and mastermind stuff and uh yeah we've got chapters about how to run games set in this universe where everything's a little bit disconnected mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to be doing the valiant uh the world's of valiant book which is going to include breakdowns of eight of their iconic settings um from the stalin verse the dead side the far away the unknown mm -hmm. uh, britannia all sorts of fun stuff so yeah and we have, I think, 40 iconic characters that are going to be in the Worlds of Valiant book. Just this in the Heroes A to Z section. This yeah. is huge. And I, I want to ask the both of you, how much have you been spending time just steeped in the Valiant world, in, in, the, in the comics? And talk a little bit about that and sort of uh, what people can expect tonally. Well, I have, I've officially read every Valiant comic that's come out since 2012 as part of my research for this mm -hmm. uh, for doing this product so i have a brain full of valiant no, um, news trivia nonsense <laughs> and hopefully an outlet for it now yes i can finally talk about it instead of just making shameful eye contact with the librarian as i'm ordering more graphic novels <laughs> And you know, Troy brings up the 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 tone of some of the um, Valiant comics. Obviously, there are some uh, of the Valiant books that are a lot more uh, gritty uh, in terms of their their tone and circumstances um, than uh, some typical superhero comics. Uh, so we are definitely working on uh, that uh, as far as uh, elements of the game system reflecting lethal damage and a, a lot of options for ramping up uh, some of the uh, effects and consequences of damage uh, in the game for one example. Yeah, and lots of advice for how to run games that are sort of morally ambiguous where maybe everybody sucks or everybody has a point. Maybe not everybody sucks, but everybody yeah. 
the villain has a point, the heroes have a point. Mm -hmm. And how to approach that at your table and how to make sure you're safe with your players when you're doing stuff like that. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. But there's there's a Valiant is a really diverse setting uh, as far as that goes. There's there are tones and characters and backgrounds all across the spectrum really as far as that goes mm -hmm. yeah it's really cool and we have advice for how to bring together a group of characters who might be from the far-flung corners of the valiant universe mm -hmm. because team-ups are sort of rare in the comics themselves there's a couple of books where the valiant characters get together but there's going to be some legwork on the part of the gm to make sure that you can bring Mm -hmm. characters from maybe the far away or the stalin verse into right. a party together and that's the thing too i mean with especially once we've got worlds of valiant um the the valiant universe in many ways is is a whole bunch of individual settings that you could easily run an entire series in in and of themselves you know you could do an entire uh you know sort of a cult series based on the dead side Mm -hmm. um, and all of the sort of supernatural elements of the Valiant universe without ever really touching on anything else um, if you didn't want to. Um, or you can kind of mix and match them however you want. So there's a lot of, a lot of interesting possibilities there. Oh, yeah. And it's important to note that our book is going to be covering uh, Valiant from 2012 to the present, uh, sort of the right. post-reboot situation. Yeah, and I do think they're very well written. I think they're well drawn. It's been awesome getting to work with some of the Valiant team, um, answering questions, getting the same answer Steve gives me when I ask, "Does this? What's the history of this?" And they're like, "You've got the whole thing in that sentence." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I am very excited about uh, our setup for the Valiant. Uh, Heroes Handbook. Uh, if we didn't make it clear to folks, uh, Valiant Adventures is going to have its own standalone core book, which is the Heroes Handbook. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it will be a great entry point for folks who are Valiant fans uh, or just you know, interested in picking up superhero RPGs in general uh, to get started with it. And uh, we got a great start on it with uh, the uh, Mutants and Masterminds Basic Heroes Handbook, which is sort of our template mm -hmm. uh, for the Valiant book. Um, and we're taking a very similar approach uh, design-wise um, to the, the Valiant Heroes Handbook so that folks will have a, a pretty easy process, I think, in terms of both learning the game and, um, you know, creating characters and things like that right from the get-go. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Sean Vieira, yes, similar in some ways to what we did with DC Adventures, um, but uh, the the Valiant line is going to be a little bit more new user-friendly. Mm -hmm. And as far as that goes, because of the lessons we've learned from Basic Heroes Handbook and the way we're building the character archetypes, there are going to be a lot of options and choices the same way you get with the archetypes in the basic heroes handbook um, except they're going to be uh, valiant themed uh, and specific to the setting so you're going to be able to do a lot with the archetypes uh, in the book uh, right from the get-go uh, as far as that goes yeah and it really feels like valiant is working more closely with us than the dc yeah. process i wasn't here for the dc process but yeah that's valiant true. has been more in hands-on i think in what we've been doing and and I suspect we'll be able to do at least a couple more things with them. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. For folks who caught the uh, live stream uh, this past weekend or who want to go back and rewatch it on YouTube, uh, we did an introductory adventure set in the Valiant universe uh, using a group of Syad, uh, Syad characters. Um, and we did introduce uh, a couple of uh, examples of the uh, the rules we're developing now uh, for uh, Valiant Adventures, uh, using uh, the uh, lethal damage rules uh, to deal with the more lethal weapons and uh, combat the characters encounter, uh, and using a, a setup of um, 
bonus and penalty dice uh, to handle uh, some of the modifiers um, a little bit more simply and dynamically in gameplay. So uh, take a look at that and you'll get a sense of some of the stuff that we're doing uh, as far as Valiant goes. Yeah. Steve knocked me out in front of everybody. It was <laughs> rude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, RC wants to know if we're going to make any Valiant adventures, and yes, we are. Um, mm -hmm. Our agreement with them starts with six adventures set in the Valiant universe, plus the adventure that's going to be in the basic hero, the Valiant Heroes handbook. So, right. right. There's lots of uh, lots of good adventures coming. Um, we're working. Steve and I both are working, and I'm in contact with Russ over at Valiant, and he's potentially going to help let me work with a couple of the writers over there to come up with something. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Um, as for how many characters are going to be in the Worlds of Valiant book, the last time I checked, it was 81 characters between the A to Z heroes and villains right. of Valiant and then the specific characters that are in the different settings, breakdowns. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a pretty good summary, Club. Heroes Handbook, uh, Worlds of Valiant book, Six Adventures mm -hmm. uh, is the initial plan. Yep, um, and if there's more stuff, we'll come up with more stuff. But that'll definitely be a good way to get started bringing Valiant to your table. Indeed. Uh, Glyph asks, uh, yeah, since it's likely to come up in a Valiant setting, do you need selective uh, if you use the multi-attack extra to avoid hitting your friends? Uh, technically, no. Um, multi-attack uh, is uh, such that you can choose the targets you hit. Um, with that attack. You do need selective with um, area attacks in order to <clears throat> exclude someone from the area. And I think we might uh, you know, be talking about things like friendly fire and the, the risks of missed shots and shooting into you know, giant melees um, in Valiant as, a, as an added rule uh, for folks who want to, to you know, take that into consideration. Yeah, that feels very valiant to accidentally blow up all your friends. Right. It does. It does. Um, uh, Sean Dugan, I did watch Ninjak versus the Valiant Universe. Um, I don't know necessarily that I did it for reference, it's more as trying to get a baseline knowledge of the characters before I jumped into the books. Mm -hmm. And I did watch Bloodsport from 2019, or Bloodshot from 2019. Bloodshot. Not Bloodsport, Bloodshot from 2019. Uh, Dominic, the things will be very compatible uh, with the existing third edition mutants and masterminds. Uh, we're building off of that. Uh, mm -hmm. And a lot of what we're doing is essentially in the form of optional adjustments to the core system to, to fine tune it uh, for the for the Valiant setting. Uh, so these are options or add ons that you could use in your own mutants and masterminds game or not, if, if they're not the sort of thing that works for you. Yeah, Sean Dugan, I know the speedster archetype has selective on multi-attack, and they shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Should get those points back and use them on something else in the archetype. I don't know if I I don't know if I checked that out in the reprint or red or not. Mm. I'll have to double check my notes. Yeah. Um, uh, Squire, I guess, yeah, I mean, you can think of it as, as an advancement of some of the existing uh, third edition stuff. Um, a lot of it is is more in the form of the the kind of optional rules that we do in a lot of our genre books, mm -hmm. um, but they're just folded in uh, to the the Valiant book because it's a standalone and it's meant for the Valiant universe setting. So um, you, you know, folks who are already familiar with third edition will see sort of where the changes are. Yeah, and we like. Um... We like the opportunity to try a couple of things out to see how mm -hmm. we like them for regular mutants and masterminds. In yeah. case we want to fold them in, or I mean, and you'll have as a DM, you'll have the option to use these rules in your own games. Right, exactly. Uh, which I think um, answers Hand Over Fist's uh, question of can we assume that some of these things that built are built into Valiant might find their way back into mutants and masterminds? And yeah, especially if uh, people like them. Yeah, yeah, and it, it could be cool, I think, in the future if we, especially for like Astonishing Adventures that are of a certain tone or genre to have mm -hmm. optional rules that we might be able to incorporate specifically for that adventure or things like that. Just yeah. ways to simulate the age and setting that we're trying to, that we're better trying, best trying to capture. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so I think, Alex, I entered a number of characters, but do you want to re- go over that again for folks who missed it, Alex? Yeah. Uh, in the Worlds of Valiant book, the last time I checked, there are 81 stat blocks in that book, and then there are eight more in the Valiant Adventures Hero Handbook, so 89 characters total. Mm-hmm. Um, plus the not- quick start archetypes. Right. I was going to say, and that's not including um, like minion archetypes and yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah, know? That's just named characters. That's just right. Named characters. Um, and we're definitely open to doing more Valiant specific actual plays, especially mm-hmm. if the Patreon is interested in that. Yeah, indeed. Um, and it would be a great opportunity to um, play test and preview some stuff. Oh, I would love for a comic with our characters to exist, but I, that's not on the table right now. No. <laughs> no. That's very expensive, but maybe someday we'll be able to do that. And I'd like to be able to control it in-house if we decide to make mm-hmm. comics with our characters. Yeah. Jay Gray, I really wish we had the demographic information of what comic books and, and media our uh, players enjoyed. But um, unfortunately, we do not have that kind of of demographic research. Mm-hmm. Would that we did. But yeah, Valiant is working with us to help market it, though. So there's a chance that we'll get some Valiant consumers as they new are. people into the Mutants and Masterminds community. And uh, I would like everybody here to help bring them in and teach them how to play the game. Because the more people who see our game, the better we'll do it. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yeah, Claude, we're aiming for something that's going to be more the size of the Basic Heroes Handbook. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we want a, a relatively compact core book for Valiant, um, something that is as uh, accessible and and non threatening as possible for an RPG. Yeah, and from a trade dress perspective, we are hoping that it will be similar in like dimensions to other Valiant graphic novels, so that it looks good on a mm-hmm. on a Valiant collection. There will be Roll20 Valiant resources, thanks to our Small But Mighty VTT team. Yes, indeed. Always keeping that in mind. Um, and uh, Valiant has, uh, as I understand it, is also announcing uh, the press release today, but um, you'd have to check in with, with them and their website and the like. Mm-hmm. That is my understanding. Yeah, We sent them the press release, so... Yeah. They're supposed to be shouting it out to the rooftops today. Well, it's great to hear that you had a uh, successful time running m M&M at your local store, Jay. It's awesome. It is awesome. We always Scattered agree. decks. Yeah, it's a great name. We always appreciate it when folks are uh, running mutants and masterminds out in the wild. So, ah, they dreaded uh, when it. So when does it come out? Date. <laughs> Uh, I don't think we have an official date yet, but we're looking for 2024. Yeah. Steve and I have almost finished the first draft of the Heroes Handbook, and then we're going to turn that over for approvals, and then we'll get to work on Worlds of Valiant. Yep, indeed. Indeed. And uh, much as when we worked with uh, worked on DC Adventures, uh, one of the, the great blessings of working with folks like Valiant uh, is that uh, we get to use their art archive. Mm-hmm. I love that. That means we'll have a really pretty book for <laughs> for the money they already paid. <laughs> yes. So uh, it should be uh, uh, stuff that's very familiar to folks who are already uh, Valiant fans and familiar with the, the Valiant universe. Oh, yeah. Could this be the possible start of a Green Ronin multiverse? A Ronin-verse, if you will. We already have a Green Ronin multiverse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lots Troy's actually worlds. been working on a project to bring Green Ronins from across the multiverse together. Yes. Yes. I don't know if we're ready to tell anybody about that, but I guess we already did. It'll be a fun surprise. Actually, you have <laughs> to make that happen. Some sort of free comic book day 2024 ad for the M&M Valiant mm-hmm. calling up would be great. Yeah, yep. it would be great. Yeah. And we are planning on um, doing some ad collaboration uh, with Valiant. Yeah, and I think um, 
I think Valiant is going to include ads in the back of some of their books for this uh, going mm -hmm. forward. It's my understanding. Uh, cool news is I'm a Valiant Comics fan. Will the future game have more accessible slice of the latest Eminem rules or is it similar? Uh, it'll be similar, but a little bit different. Um, we're going to be... We're doing... We're, it's built off of the core engine of Mutants of Masterminds 3rd Edition, but we're doing a couple of optional rules to better simulate the, the tone and setting mm -hmm. of Valiant Comics. Yeah. <laughs> Crystal's got to do TMNT. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, we if we did that without Crystal, she would she would rightfully murder us. So. Mm -hmm. She knows where I live. I can't. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> that. That would be right out. So only, only if Crystal's on board can we do that. Mm -hmm. That's a must. I think we have plans for Fear RPG Day, but I don't know what they are. We do. Um, it's me. It is I. Right. <laughs> I at any moment. You know how the winds are here in Reno. Um, Indeed. Not very friendly to the disembodied but we're talking about free rpg stuff and their plans in the works we have made so many different announcements over the course of this month really big ones so mm -hmm. we're, we're mining this this kind of rich landscape for that kind of uh that kind of opportunity so definitely something what it is um i wouldn't dare even surmise right that'll be something I cool i wouldn't gamble on that uh, uh, uh. Because I'm in Reno. Right. Uh, uh, See? Yeah. yeah. I know we've had a really cool couple of weeks for uh, Eminem. Or, I mean, for Green Ronin as, as a whole. It's I mean, a we've got, good time to be a Ronin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fifth Age, Into the Motherlands. Uh, now this Valiant deal. There's a lot of cool stuff happening. There's a lot here. going on, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Fantasy Age, Second Edition, all that yep. stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just been jam-packed. Uh, Sean Dugan, I almost hate to ask, but how much of the book will be text from the deluxe and basic hero st handbook starting stating basic mechanics? I think we've rewritten most of it from the ground up. Yeah, oh, a lot exciting. of it. I mean, we want to keep the, you know, the core mechanics are essentially the same. Um, so mm -hmm. some of it has been a little, has been rephrased in some cases, but uh, you're not going to find um, a staggering amount um, that's new if you know how the core means and mastermind system works. Uh, we are definitely making some tweaks to things. Um, mm -hmm. Some uh, particularly complex elements are probably going to get left out. Uh, like, I don't think you're going to find the variable effect in, you know, uh, Valiant Adventures. Uh, um, and we've definitely, you know, adjusted and changed some stuff, but um, a lot of the, you know, the core rules text is going to be familiar as mm -hmm. far as that goes. Uh -uh. Yeah. So I had a we've made, Oh, sorry. Go we, ahead. We've made a few a few changes throughout as well. Like there's a couple of skills that we've broken up into extra skills. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. We've done some work with the afflictions effect to yep. make that a little easier to glom onto. Yeah, indeed. And a lot more um, sort of prefab uh, afflictions that are just ready to be slotted in as powers without having to mess with customizing them. Mm -hmm. We've done co some cool stuff with the impervious toughness to make it less of a migraine for me. <laughs> yep. Um, I, I wanted to uh, ask a quick question. You know, given so mutants and masterminds been around for some time, and mm -hmm. have is the addition of this opportunity with Valiant has it introduced anything that you want to sort of get into that might innovate in in our little uh, corner of the TTRPG world? Hmm. There's a bunch of uh, various adjustments that we've mm -hmm. made uh, in the game that I think are are potentially fun that I think folks are going to enjoy. Um, nice. You know, as far as that goes, um, RC was talking about the. I assume the the reference of healing via food is a is a reference to to Bloodshot's need for uh, large amounts of protein to make his regeneration power work. Uh, fortunately, that's just an example of the source limit. In mutants mm -hmm. and masterminds uh it just means you need you know a source of something uh, in order to regenerate so that was actually pretty easy um but uh it's worth noting that i did basically uh rewrite the regeneration power <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah he's been working really hard <laughs> on just tinkering with things that already mm -hmm. exist which is really cool yeah claude thanks for saying the actual plays last week were red i had a lot of fun 
sorry that I overwrote on Wednesday and we have to play again. <laughs> <laughs> when people are definitely interested when we're going to reschedule that, so we'll get that news out mm -hmm. right away. Um, are you seeing that? Uh, I'm I'm afraid to touch it because I don't want to break something. But there's a question about um, power. Well, let me see here. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's hand over fist. Says it's been asked before about reeking advantages to different abilities was once mm -hmm. mentioned and uh, uh, to come in the Vigilante's Handbook, any chance of that coming in Valiant? Not clear on what that's referring to. Yeah, I'm not either. Advantages or skills? Cause, uh, or are you talking about like how you can do um, like finesse grabbing and you can use agility for grabs instead of strength? Oh, okay. Yeah, we might talk about that a bit in, uh, in Valiant as a um, a benefit or something like that. Yeah, I think it'd be cool if there's a need for Unless it. One of, Jake, one of the oh, things sorry. we're one Go of the ahead, things sir. we're trying to focus on, at least I'm trying to focus on from the the design side of things with Valiant, is to make sure that the game has all of the effect game mechanical stuff, effects, advantages, etc. That it needs. Uh, in order to do all of the Valiant characters, but that because it's focused on Valiant, that it doesn't have stuff that it doesn't need um, because nobody in the Valiant comic does that or has mm -hmm. that. Um, so we're trying to make sure that there isn't any extraneous material in the, in the core book um, because it's focused on a specific setting rather than a general sort of build your own superhero universe kit. Mm -hmm. Uh, as far as that goes. Nice. Yeah. I just wanted to jump in real quick, Alex, sorry, and just say, listen, you got a bunch of new stuff coming. Um, let's not start talking about a new edition. That's <laughs> that's that's a little bit more than I think uh, our, our developers can. You're just going to watch them short out live. Yeah, one giant sorry. project at a time, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, sorry, Alex, go ahead. Um, I was just going to answer uh, Zhao Mariano. Mariano, if I say that right, I'm, if I don't say that right, I'm sorry. But uh, I have not tried out the previous Valiant Comics RPG, but I did purchase a copy to read, um, just to see sort of how they approached things and to see mm -hmm. if there's anything I liked or didn't like. Yeah. Uh, but it didn't really answer into what Steve and I have been working on. Well, because we already knew we were using Mutants and Masterminds as the. Mm -hmm core engine so i mean it really wasn't a matter of other game systems as far as that went yeah. um uh, dominus ex machina um whether the valiant universe is accessible from other comic book universes including earth primes universe is a decision entirely for your own game master nice <laughs> and and some something that could definitely happen in your own campaign if the answer is the multiverse is vast and strange yes Indeed it is. And so are our fans. So do with that what you want. Um, yeah, Hanover, exactly. We want to avoid bloat and keep it nice and trim and Very specifically good. tied into Valiant. Exactly. Uh, what excites or interests the team the most about the Valiant universe? Steve, do you want to answer that first? Um there are a bunch of things, but um, I am a I'm a big fan of of psionics in like any setting, any super, you know superheroes, any science fiction, any of that stuff. So of course I love the psyots and everything mm -hmm. to do with them, which is why my you know actual play adventure was about them. Um, and uh, um, so of course I'm also a big fan of faith, you know, and the harbinger stuff and all of that. Um, and um, I love the I love a lot of the the Shadow Man uh, stuff about the the dead side and the occult sort of aspects of the the Valiant setting. But there's a ton of fun stuff in it. Yeah, I love how weird it is. Like, there's so right? much just weird stuff in the Valiant universe. That's I, I'm excited to be able to sort of gamify that and have a chance to tell our own stories in this space, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, plus, I love how many grumpy immortals there are in this universe. <laughs> right. That might just be me typecasting myself, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love Eternal Warrior. I love uh, Armstrong, um, Exo Man of War. Yep. I love that Douglas MacArthur is in the universe, but not named Douglas MacArthur. Right. Because my grandpa has beef with him. 
My grandpa was there when they invaded, when they took the Philippines back in World War II, and Douglas MacArthur came up and said, "I have returned," and he leaned to his buddy and said, "What did he do?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would be cool to cosplay as Armstrong or to play in an actual play as Armstrong. I think that'd be right. fun. Yeah, I did like the Jim Shooter books, um, mm-hmm. but again, our stuff is all from 2012 onward. Yeah, when indeed. I believe that's when DMG acquired Valiant. Yep. Well, I mean, these days when you're working with any big shared universe, it's always like you know what's canon and mm-hmm. what's not as far as that goes. Yeah, they've been very cooperative on getting us like a story bible and a, yes, what they want us to pay attention to and what they would like to see covered, and it's been really cool just having meetings and discussions with them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Squire, we're probably going to try and keep the setting as up to date as possible, but also like when we were working with um, on DC Adventures, it's about focusing on sort of the characters as their essential versions, knowing that things about them come and go, uh, you know, and uh, trying to to at least capture the essence of those characters. Um, without necessarily it being a blow by blow of every change they've ever gone through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to borrow a little bit of our mentality of trying to do the iconic version of the characters that we had with DC Adventures mm-hmm. rather than doing sort of a up to date. Yeah, I mean, we might, you know, uh, put in notes and things like that about, hey, this version of the character is significant. And if you want to know, you know, here's here's some information about that. Yeah, but, it's a fun way to update that. Yeah, but you know, we want to. Don't do so. Valiant first. It is not. Uh, and as as fun as that idea would be, <laughs> it is not. But the handle logger version has modding capabilities. So if you want to make that modded cards for and, those characters, we, you can do we that. are working on a policy for that. Nice. Mm-hmm. That is true. That is true. That is that a program is that, will, that will be coordinated that, that they're going to, uh, through Steam. Uh, RC, Valiant has quick... approval on things. So uh, we definitely will be running things by them mm-hmm. uh, as far as that goes. Uh, and if they have any questions, you know, about character's stats or power level or anything like that you know they will obviously let us know yeah steve and i have approached this universe as a bit of a lower power level universe compared to a Oddly. standard superhero yeah universe so like our our quick start baseline is going to be pl8 instead of pl10 yeah and we're indeed building sort of from there hey i had a question for the both of you specific to the idea of developing for an existing ip what are some other things that you have to take into account may consider at the outset of the process that you don't or omit something as you kind of special arrangements or sort of considerations that you make throughout the development process? Uh, the first thing that's been really interesting is having to get approval for ideas. <laughs> um, yes. Which, I mean, I'm sort of used to because prior to prior to becoming the line developer, I always had to get approval from Steve and Crystal for stuff, but um, it's been having this this cooperative relationship with them where we are representing their IP and we want to make sure that we're respectful of it and that we we stay true to the spirit that they want to have for their universe. Um, and just doing enough research and being invested in the setting enough to have that sort of knowledge that I already have with our setting in our characters Mm -hmm. um it's just it's a big learning process yeah it is and that's that's the real um the challenge with with all licensed products is is doing your research and you know understanding that it's a a give and take in terms of of approvals and making sure that you're pitching things in in the way that the the licensor wants Yeah, and we do want to include you guys in some mm-hmm. of that process, Absolutely. Um, especially on the Patreon. If you're a member of Memes and Masterminds, the, our Patreon, um, we're going to be doing early looks at stuff. We're going to be 
releasing some playtest materials, so we'll be getting feedback from you all um, to make sure that this is as much your guys' stuff as our stuff because we're one big happy family here at Eminem. So Corey, Corey Alcorn brings something up that is actually kind of interesting, and I don't know, necessarily know the answer as it relates to specifically the game, so forgive me if this was already asked, but in a situation like this, approach or do they approach you? I believe we approached them. I believe we approached them. That happened before my time here. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, it varies, honestly. Yeah. I'm imagining. Yeah, yeah it does vary. Point. It's sort of a mm -hmm. lots of. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, a while ago, we did some mutants and masterminds stat blocks for Valiant characters that showed up in Valiant comics. Yep. Um, and that was sort of the beginning of our relationship with them as developers. Mm -hmm. um, we started looking to doing a full source book and a full licensed IP with them uh, after that. And it's it's sort of been back and forth. I mean, we both of us have been, have a vested interest in this happening and succeeding. Right. I don't know of any shout-outs or references in the Valiant books yet, but obviously when there are some, we will be sure to let folks know. Oh, yeah. So, uh, looking will. at... Oh, go ahead. Saying hi to Will. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me dive in here real <laughs> fast. I just want to... Uh, Squire asks, so when... I I'm curious as well. So, looking at sort of the, the, that story, is there, hey, this happens in this slice of the or is it a um, the game master section of the Valiant Adventures Heroes Handbook is going to have some uh, sample series that you can set in different slices mm -hmm. of continuity mm -hmm. um, they have a really excellent tool in their Valiant Handbook that um, sorry in the Valiant Style Guide that sort of breaks down the timeline of the universe and sort of like chapters of Valiant's continuity that have been really right. helpful for me as I've been sort of planning out how to say what kind of campaigns that you can run as a GM. So our, we're not going to have a set timeline in the stat blocks, but we are going to have a set sort of, we're going to have like options for how you want to, how you want to do your Valiant game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. Whether it might be hard so if someone's like okay i need to add myself to the valiant world here where should they go um if you want to get familiar with the valiant universe before uh, jumping into valiant adventures uh, from us uh, my best advice would be to start with the 2012 reboot and pick whatever line of graphic novels is most interesting to you indeed um, if you want the widest sort of exposure, I would go with some of the Unity books. Um, those are the sort of the big team-up books that Valiant puts out right? Um, to give you sort of a sampling of all of the main players in the universe if you're just looking for research purposes. Um, like I said, I love Archer and Armstrong, so that's all, mm -hmm. and I love Quantum and Woody. Those are both great books to read. Yep. Um, Faith is great. Any of the Bloodshot stuff. Faith is so good. I love oh, that I love book. <laughs> Um, and Generation Zero, which we did a game of, <laughs> yeah, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Indeed, sounds like folks are having a hard time hearing Troy, so uh, we will do our best to uh, rephrase or restate uh, anything that uh, he says, mm -hmm. uh, so folks hear it. Um. <gasps> Claude already wants to get hard, get to work on converting all of the Valiant characters to Mutants and Masterminds. Uh, <laughs> converting all the Valiant fans to Mutants and Masterminds fans. Um, where is the best place to go to to convert? Mutant? I guess the Freedomverse is a great place to direct people. Uh, that Discord that uh, mm -hmm. Mapook runs. Um, I think because they have lots for, of games there for where to find the Valiant fans uh, to you know bring them over to the dark side. Yeah, I don't know where to go find Valiant fans. Like maybe on the social media posts they make about our game. Yeah. Uh, I like Book of Shadows Glyph. I think I think it's fine. I like the dead side and the stuff mm -hmm. that happens there. Yeah. 
I think it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I like the far away too, um, because mm -hmm. there's just so many weird, like, just people in there. <laughs> yeah, it's got that whole Bermuda Triangle thing going on for it. Mm -hmm. Yep, there are a few issues of Valiant that have uh, conversions already for some of our characters. We'll yeah. be tinkering with those stat blocks a little bit for the official book, but they are mm -hmm. out there in the wild. Yeah, and they give you a pretty good idea of our sort of line of thinking for a lot mm -hmm. of our Valiant characters. Uh, they won't be exactly the same as they appeared in the comics, RC. Um, I don't imagine there'll be huge changes, but we are no. we are gonna we're gonna tamper with them so that they fit in the wider meta of the stat blocks as a whole. Yeah. Yes, come to the dark side. We have D20s. <laughs> they make a great noise when you roll them together. Right. Yeah, and Steve and I will both be doing running around tables about Valiant yep. in the months to come. Lots of design journals, lots of previews. I'm going to risk it. You, uh, Steve, you had mentioned, or it might have been you, Alex, that talked about how our friends in uh, over on the Patreon will get some opportunity to kind of immerse themselves in stuff. Do you want to talk a little bit about maybe specifically some of the a thing that they could expect to be involved in? Yeah, um, specifically, we want to be able to give you early access to the rules so that you guys can mess with them and point out the things that we got that we might have missed in our first mm -hmm. uh, dash to get everything done. Yep. Um, we want to be able to take feedback to do play testing. Um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. I just we want to be able to shake the system and make sure it's all good to go before it goes out into the wider public. That's a key thing. And I can think of yeah. nobody better than the Mutants Masterminds Patreons. Indeed. Absolutely. And, and what a great way to dedicated. onboard yourself to the whole experience. Which is a great way of saying, hey, come on over to the Patreon, which is patreon.com slash mutants and masterminds and pledge. It'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If uh, folks are not already on the Patreon, this is a great time to check it out. There's uh, some uh, good stuff coming. Yeah. And we are still working on other non-valiant things as well. Mm -hmm. We still owe you a Vigilante's Handbook. It is coming. Yes, still. And it is coming. <laughs> um, we do have some more Astonishing Adventures coming out soon. I'm waiting on cover art. But uh, other than that, they are laid out and they're ready to go. I just need the covers to come back from the artists. Mm -hmm. um, including Night of the Living Robots, which is going to be a fun adventure. Uh, it's another high school adventure for teen superheroes dealing with a night of animatronics going crazy across freedom city uh yeah. steve did an actual play of that last year yeah you can also check that out on the uh, youtube channel yeah and uh we have another one coming whatever happened to the next gen which is about it's another hero high adventure uh dealing with a group of new students at claremont academy trying to rescue the next gen from dr sin's nefarious schemes so uh apuk some of the older um, Valiant characters are out of continuity uh, in one f fashion or another, uh, or have been replaced uh, mm -hmm. with sort of newer versions of their, those characters in continuity due to licensing, legal, and other issues. Um, we are going to go with the versions of the Valiant characters from uh, the 2012 reboot on. Um, so don't plan on seeing characters who, who are no longer published by Valiant since then. Yeah, as much as I love Torok. Yeah. Uh, Chrono Crisis is still in the works. It's actually with the editor right now. So mm -hmm. um, when I get that back from the editor, it'll go to layout. And again, we're still waiting on cover art for the next few adventures. Stat of the Valley Ant. <laughs> <laughs> I assume the Valley Ant is like Ant Man with a Valley Girl accent. Well, it's it's um, Whoop Ants, you know, um, alternate from another timeline. Right, Claude. Originally, it was whatever happened to the alternate teens, but we've modified it a little bit to be the next gen. It's so scary to think that you know current students at Claremont Academy are like 
Who are the next gen? They're a bunch of old people, right? Yeah, Bowman's like 30 now. Ugh. Right? <laughs> they went here like forever ago. RZ, you are freely to steal any ideas I have from Mulamo. Yes. The quality of your work is just the vagueness of your references, is what I've been told. <laughs> hey, I built a whole career on that, so. Are they giving you guys a chance to create a character or characters to add to the Valiant continuity in this project? Um, not explicitly, but we are making some of the antagonists and things for our adventures that we're working on, our, our own creations. Mm -hmm. And all of the um, pregens on Saturday's game were Steve creations. Yeah. Indeed. Except for the, bad, the villain. Except for Black Sheep, who is an actual Valiant character. That's a real mean right hook. Yes, yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, what else is going on? Uh, what was that about other shows? I'm trying to uh, curious what else we've got cooking for upcoming streams. It's it's really sweet that you guys think that we plan these things that far in advance. Yeah, I know I'm responsible for the next actual play in. Uh, June? Mm -hmm. uh, is it? Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, that'd be two months July. from now. It would be June. Yeah. Although we might look to be doing the Bow People Part 2 sooner than June and then do something fresh in June. We'll see. Oh my gosh, the Bow People. That's a terrible team name. The Bow Folk. <laughs> it's better than <laughs> superhero team name pending. Pending, right? <laughs> Go, superhero team name pending. Uh, Michael, this will be compatible with Eminem 3rd Edition, uh, but it will be a standalone product. Um, yes. If you know how to play Eminem 3E, you will know will how pick to. pick this up like that. Yeah. Uh, Sean Dugan, we did lay out a schedule for Eminem Mondays. Right. Uh, probably just because we know what dates they're happening on doesn't necessarily mean, know, mean we know what's happening on those dates. Yeah, I think we're at the end of our prepared stuff. Um yeah, I think next week. Uh... No, no, we've got a we've got a few things coming up. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Next week we're probably going to do what we talked about. What we were going to talk about today before we did the Valiant announcement, which was small heroes, small villains, and small heroes, small town yep. shenanigans. Indeed. Uh, and then the next thing we have on deck is HQs uh, visiting the Silver Age. And that's the last thing we have planned. Oh, so we're going to have to have another planning episode. Yep. Those went by so fast. You want to... Oh, you, Troy wants to do the Charlie's Angels universe. <laughs> Get a dream, Troy. I'm going to age myself and say that. You mean like that Lucy Liu movie? I'm going to age myself and say, no, I mean the 70s television <laughs> show. <laughs> well, I got to tell born, you, friends. Boy. Right. Yeah, exactly. I, I got to tell you, I can't even get because of the connectivity. But um, it's been valiant just trying to get on this friggin' live stream. But I'm super excited about the news. And I know there's a ton of work to be done. Are you feeling like you've said all the things to be said at this time? Yeah, I think we've covered it. Yeah, I think. when we are always open to answering questions. Um, mm -hmm. If you have anything at all, um, if somebody wants to start a chain chat in the Eminem Facebook, we can go chat over there. Mm -hmm. Or you can email questions to let's play at greenrunning.com and Troy yeah. will get them to us. And then uh, don't forget to tag us in uh, as we get those sort of threads going and understanding, of course, that we answer as we can, that we won't always be able to answer every question and sometimes we'll flat out refuse. But there is a uh, jackpot. There is um, if you if you tag Green Ronin, we'll we'll dive in and and get the right uh, folks answering the right questions. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, Apuk. Real quickly, there is no news yet about um, any um, licensing changes for Eminem or any Green Ronin products. But obviously, when there is, we'll announce it. 
Yeah, we don't we don't hide anything unless we have to. <laughs> yeah, no, pretty much once it's once it's decided, it's out there. <laughs> And then yeah. we'll complain about having to hide it the entire time that we have to hide it. Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah, I'm so bad at it. We hate it. Uh, yeah, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you're excited, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Us too. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been really cool. Go out and acquire more licenses. <laughs> we have to finish this one first, Clark. <laughs> Yeah, um, I guess we should probably wrap up though. Since, since after, since yeah, can you guys still and... hear me? Yep. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Let's go ahead and wrap up. Hey, uh, friends, thanks for hanging in there. Thanks for being patient as we held the secret, and uh, thanks for being patient while we got the live stream rolling. Uh, Reno is not friendly, but uh, but you all are, and we definitely appreciate it. And guys, thanks for your patience too. Um, um, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of all of this stuff. We've got lots of great things on the horizon. And mm -hmm. it looks, sounds like we've got a planning meeting or a planning episode coming up soon as well. So folks can yep. anticipate that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Look forward to it. Um, I do want to plug real quick. If yeah. you are going to Origins, Origins event signups are on Saturday. And I'm running a bunch of fun Mutants and Mastermind stuff. I'm running a Superman game. I'm running um, a Titan City game. I am running a huge Hades Invasion game that's going to have seven game masters oh, and yeah. 25 players. So check that out, folks. That's going to be crazy. Yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a madhouse. Um, but yeah, the name of that event is just Hades Invasion. So I I accomplished my goal of being free floating Hades Chaos, and I'm excited about that. <laughs> I get to go from table to table right. sprinkling nonsense. Excellent. Awesome. Hey, Steve, anything going on in your neck of the woods you want to share? Um, it's uh, all uh, masterminds all the time this week. For me. There you go, friends. All right. Well, why don't we wrap on this? Uh, again, thank you to everybody. We will be back on Thursday with Thursday. Um, make sure you tune in. We got good stuff coming. Uh, lots of great stuff to talk about. And uh, with that, I say a goodbye unto you all. Goodbye. See you, folks. Bye, everybody. <laughs>